Hi everyone, I'm Michael Gomez from the Oxford Mathematical Institute and welcome to the Mathematical Observer in which we explore the interest in mathematics behind various everyday phenomena. In this video we're going to look at the jumping popper toy. So if you're not familiar with one of these already, this is just the standard type you can buy from any toy shops. You can get them in lots of other colours and sizes, so for example this sort of pink colour here. You can get it in this kind of funky glitter style and also amphibian. But what these all have in common is that they are a spherical cap, so they're part of a larger sphere made from a rubbery material. So it's very elastic and easily deformable, and in particular I can turn the cap inside out to create an inverted shape. And this inverted shape is stable while I hold the cap between my fingers, but as soon as I place it down it becomes unstable. If I play that back at a slower speed, you can see more clearly what's happening. The popper moves very slowly at first, it's almost completely still, before it suddenly pops off the table and back to its original shape. You can also have a lot of fun filming one of these with a high-speed camera. The footage here has been slowed down around a thousand times, and you see this very long phase where the popper moves extremely slowly before it suddenly accelerates back to its natural shape. This explosive transition from one shape to another is what is known to physicists and engineers as a snap-through instability because of that snapping or popping noise that you hear. Now because snap-through usually happens very quickly, the same type of instability can be very useful in technology. For example, an electrical kettle manages to turn itself off when the water is boiled using a flexible component, which is engineered so that when it reaches a critical temperature, the component suddenly snaps through and cuts off the current in the circuit. While reading my kitchen for other examples of snap-through, I came across this colander here. So currently this takes up a lot of space and my kitchen is frankly undersized. Fortunately what I can do is apply a small force so that this rapidly snaps to a collapsed state. If, like me, you have hair, then you may have had experience with one of these metal hair clips. Now these work by snapping from an open state to a closed state that pins your hair in place and allows you to look your best. Going back to my popper toy to understand what's driving the snap through motion, here I've made my own DIY popper toys just by cutting sections out of a tennis ball to make some spherical caps. Now crucially these caps are identical in almost every single respect. So they both come from the same unfortunate tennis ball, they're both green on this side. They both have the same thickness, except that I've made this one here a shallower cap than this one here. Now if I turn the shallow cap inside out and place it down, you see that it immediately jumps back to its original shape, just like a popper toy. Whereas if I turn the deeper one inside out and place it down, you see that it stays happily where it is. So clearly the geometry of a spherical cap, rather than the material from which it's made, determines whether it snaps through or not. Now in a later video we'll see what controls how fast snap through happens and what makes the popper toy so unpredictable. Depending on how long I initially hold it for, it can take anywhere between a fraction of a second and several seconds to snap back again. But to understand why the geometry is so important here, we can look a bit more carefully at what happens when we turn a spherical cap inside out. If we take a vertical slice through the cap passing through its pole, then it just looks like an arc of a circle. Now for a cap that's very thin, you might imagine that turning the cap inside out corresponds to simply reflecting its shape. If we then take a vertical slice through that inside out shape, then we end up with an arc that's a perfect mirror image of the original arc. This process is called mirror buckling, the key idea being that if we look at the position of any two points within the material, once they've been reflected, the distance between them is unchanged. This means there's no stretching of any bonds within the material, and so there's no stored elastic energy. Mirror buckling is therefore very favourable as it's a way for the cap to deform without any energy cost whatsoever. It's a free lunch. But this simplified picture is true only if a cap is infinitely thin. As we know though, a real cap does actually have a thickness. If we turn a cap with a finite thickness inside out, then the material that's initially on the outside of the original cap ends up on the inside and so gets squashed. Similarly, the material that's initially in the inside is stretched outwards. Where these two effects meet at the edge of the cap, this causes a lip where the cap tries to bend back to its original shape, essentially to try and reduce some of this stretching and compression. The thicker the cap is, the more stretching and compression there is, meaning that the size of the lip is larger. You can see this lip if you view the cap side on after turning it inside out. So rather than part of a sphere, the shape is more flattened at its edges, like one of those old air raid warden's helmets. 
Now you can think of this lip as the cap trying to return back to its original shape. If the size of the lip is then significant compared to the overall size of the cap, then it's strong enough to roll the central part of the cap back through to the original shape. Because the size of the lip also grows with the thickness of the cap, this explains why the inside out state only snaps through for caps that are sufficiently thick compared to their depth. And it's precisely the elastic energy stored in that lip which is suddenly released as kinetic energy to drive the snap through motion. So there you go, turning a spherical cap inside out is a free lunch only if the cap is infinitely thin. But for a real cap with a thickness, this process of mirror buckling necessarily stretches and squashes part of the material, which is why a popper toy will tend to snap back to its original shape once it's been released. If you've made it this far, thanks for listening. If you're interested in further details on the physics of mirror buckling or spherical caps, then some links to relevant literature that you can access for free on your own electric computer should appear somewhere on the screen.